Permit to Work (PTW) system. A permit to work (PTW) is a critical safety management tool used across various industries, particularly in environments where hazardous work is routine. It is a formal, written, and approved process designed to control certain types of work that are identified as potentially dangerous. The PTW system outlines specific procedures to ensure that these activities are performed safely, with all hazards identified, assessed, and mitigated before work begins. Why is a PTW system necessary? The PTW system is essential for several reasons. 1. Risk management. It ensures that all risks associated with the job are identified and controlled before work starts. This proactive approach minimizes the likelihood of accidents or incidents. 2. Clear communication. The PTW system enhances communication among all parties involved in the work. It ensures that everyone is aware of their responsibilities, the risks involved, and the safety measures in place. 3. Regulatory compliance. Many industries are required by law to implement PTW systems as part of their safety protocols. A well-documented PTW process helps ensure compliance with local, national, and international safety regulations. 4. Coordination of multiple activities. In complex work environments, multiple teams or contractors may be working simultaneously. The PTW system helps coordinate these activities, preventing conflicts and ensuring that safety is maintained throughout. 5. Incident prevention. By systematically reviewing and controlling work processes, a PTW system helps prevent incidents like fires, explosions, equipment damage, and injuries. Who needs a permit to work? A permit to work is required for any task that could potentially pose a risk to safety, health, or the environment. This includes, but is not limited to, hot work, activities like welding, cutting, grinding, or any task that could generate sparks or heat, posing a fire hazard. Confined space entry. Work in tanks, vessels, or other enclosed spaces where hazardous atmospheres may exist or be created. Electrical work. Maintenance, installation, or repair of electrical systems, where the risk of electrocution or fire exists. Working at heights. Any work carried out above ground level, where there is a risk of falling. Excavation work. Digging or earth-moving tasks that could affect underground services or structures. Chemical handling. Operations involving hazardous chemicals that could result in spills, leaks, or exposure. Types of work permits. Work permits are categorized based on the nature of the work to ensure that the appropriate safety measures are applied. Common types include 1. Hot work permit. Required for any operation involving open flames or producing heat and sparks. Specific controls include fire watch personnel, fire extinguishing equipment, and ensuring that flammable materials are removed from the work area. 2. Cold work permit. For tasks that do not generate heat, such as mechanical maintenance, inspections, or general repair work. These permits often focus on isolation procedures to prevent the release of hazardous energy. 3. Confined Space Entry Permit. Necessary for work inside confined spaces where there may be risks like toxic gases, oxygen deficiency, or engulfment. The permit ensures that proper atmospheric testing, ventilation, and rescue plans are in place. 4. Electrical Work Permit. Required for activities involving electrical installations, repairs, or modifications. It ensures that circuits are de-energized, lockout, tagout procedures are followed, and the work is supervised by qualified personnel. 5. Excavation Permit. Issued for digging operations, it includes precautions to avoid underground utilities, cave-ins, and ensuring that shoring or trench boxes are used as needed. 6. Working at Height Permit. For tasks performed at heights, this permit ensures that appropriate fall protection measures, such as harnesses, guardrails, and safety nets, are in place. How to get a permit to work? The process of obtaining a permit to work typically involves several key steps. 1. Permit Request and Preparation. The person responsible for the task, often a supervisor or project manager, 
completes a PTW request form, detailing the scope of work, potential hazards, and safety measures to be implemented. 2. Risk Assessment A comprehensive risk assessment is conducted to identify potential hazards associated with the work. This assessment includes evaluating the environment, the task itself, and any interactions with other ongoing activities. 3. Control Measures Based on the risk assessment, specific control measures are identified and documented in the PTW. These may include isolation of energy sources, use of personal protective equipment, PPE, emergency preparedness, and more. 4. Approval Process The PTW is reviewed by a designated authority, such as a safety officer, site manager, or HSE, health, safety, and environment, coordinator. The authority ensures that all identified risks are adequately controlled and that the work can proceed safely. 5. Permit issuance. Once approved, the PTW is issued to the work team. The permit details all safety requirements, control measures, and the exact time frame in which the work is authorized. 6. Toolbox Talk and Briefing. Before starting the work, a toolbox talk or safety briefing is conducted with the team to review the PTW details, discuss the risks, and ensure that everyone understands their responsibilities. 7. Work execution and monitoring. The work proceeds under the conditions specified in the PTW. Ongoing monitoring is essential to ensure that conditions do not change and that all safety measures remain effective. 8. Permit closure. Once the work is completed, the permit is signed off by both the work team and the supervising authority. The work area is inspected to confirm it is safe, and the permit is officially closed. Challenges in implementing a PTW system. Implementing a PTW system can present several challenges for organizations, including 1. Complexity and bureaucracy. The PTW process can be seen as cumbersome, leading to potential delays if not managed efficiently. This may create resistance among staff who feel it adds unnecessary layers of bureaucracy. 2. Training and competence. Ensuring that all personnel understand the PTW process and are competent to assess risks and apply control measures is crucial. This requires ongoing training and refreshers to keep up with evolving safety standards. 3. Coordination across teams. In large operations with multiple teams or contractors, coordinating PTWs can be challenging. Miscommunication or overlapping permits can lead to conflicts or unsafe conditions. 4. Consistency in application. Consistently applying the PTW system across all departments and activities is vital. Variations in how permits are issued, monitored, and closed can undermine the system's effectiveness. 5. Documentation and record keeping. Maintaining accurate records of all issued permits, including their associated risk assessments and control measures, is necessary for compliance and auditing purposes. Poor documentation can lead to gaps in safety management. 6. Resistance to change. Implementing or upgrading a PTW system may be met with resistance, particularly in organizations where informal practices have been the norm. It requires a cultural shift towards a more structured approach to safety. Conclusion. A well-implemented permit-to-work system is a cornerstone of effective safety management in high-risk environments. While it can be complex and resource-intensive, the benefits of preventing accidents, ensuring regulatory compliance, and fostering a safety-first culture make it an indispensable tool for any organization involved in hazardous work. Addressing the challenges of implementation through proper training, clear communication, and consistent application can significantly enhance the effectiveness of the PTW system.